In the summer of 1979, a small town in northeast New Jersey made the national headlines after the bodies of several counselors and campers were found at a local resort on the shore of Camp Grizzly Lake. The campground had closed in the late 1950s, following the apparent accidental deaths of several youngsters at the site. Then, in 1978, Camp Grizzly was purchased by a new owner. He planned to reopen the camp during the latter part of 1979. After the plans were announced, strange events occurred around the resort, with each incident becoming odder and more bizarre than the last. Small fires would break out with no apparent cause, the bodies of birds and small animals would mysteriously appear around the cabins, and eerie sounds would emanate after dark from deep in the woods. The new owner suspected the locals were behind these episodes. The townspeople felt that the deaths in the 1950s had stained the reputation of their community and they thought it was best to not reopen any old wounds. However, others in the community never believed that those deaths were an accident and they attributed them to a ritualistic murder. They were convinced that the facts were covered up to protect prominent public figures from prosecution. All of this controversy came to a climax on the night of Friday, July 13, 1979, when madness and mayhem returned to the shores of Camp Grizzly Lake. It's 1979, and the counselors at Camp Grizzly are enjoying Jody's guitar by the campfire. Chet left to check the generator an hour ago. He should have been back by now. Then he appeared. The man in the bear mask. With a subtle nod, he tossed Chet's severed head into the campfire before splitting Becky in half. Who, if anyone, will survive the night in Camp Grizzly? Good evening and welcome to the Solo Gamers Club. Tonight we'll be playing Camp Grizzly. The game was designed by Jason Peter Topolsky and produced by Ameritrash Games. Players take on the roles of camp counselors who are being stalked through a maze of cabins and camp trails by Otis, a homicidal killer with an unhealthy bear fetish. Stay alive while cooperating with other players to collect a combination of objective tokens required to begin one of the four game finales. Those who survive the finale win the game. In Camp Grizzly, the terms space and location refer to a single square on a board. A cabin comprises one or more spaces and cabins are connected by trails, either standard trails or forest trails. We begin the setup by drawing a counselor card and uh, in this case for this game I'm going to be using a total of three counselors. So this is the counselor deck and we're going to end up drawing three cards from that deck. I'll give this a cut and then we'll see which counselors we end up starting the game with. Okay, our first one is revealed to be Sherry. She's an orienteer. Sherry may use nature trails freely. Normally a nature trail you have to roll a die and see what the effect of that uh, attempt at using that trail is. She can use those for free. Sherry can't be lost. If she starts her turn in the woods, she may immediately return to the nature trail of her choosing. She has a starting health of three and her panic value is three. Okay, our next counselor is going to be Karen. She's a mentor. Campers in her care may re-roll their special skills once per turn. That's very valuable. She's also inspired. Karen begins the game with two additional survival cards. That'll give her a total of four survival cards. She has a move and health of three and her panic value is two. And our final character is Jody. He's a loner. Jody receives plus one to his fight roll if alone. He's also a rebel. When crossing paths with a cameo, Jody may roll a d6. On a four to six, the cameo has no effect. He has a move and health of three and a panic value of two. Now we place the matching pawns for our counselors in the campfire at the center of the board.
And now we shuffle uh, our cabin cards and our survival cards, as well as two other decks that came with the expansions, a snuff deck and a maniac deck. Cabin cards come in several varieties. Uh, the first type of card is a weapon card. Weapons are used to defend against Otis. Every weapon displays which die should be rolled in a fight, as well as the number of hands required to equip the weapon. In this case, we have a baseball bat. We can, this is a versatile weapon, uh, can be equipped as one or two-handed weapon. As a one-handed weapon, it would roll a four-sided dice. Two-handed weapon would roll a six-sided dice. Another type of card is a item card. Some item cards have hand icons and are equipped just like weapons. Other ones can be placed directly in a backpack. Another type of card is an environment card. And these can have potentially lasting effects uh, on the players during the game. Another type of card is the cameo card. When drawn, place the cameo's pawn on a random nature trail. Place the cameo's card next to the left of your counselor's card. The counselors that cross paths with a cameo must resolve the cameo's special text before continuing with their move. Many cameos stalk their own targets every round following the player's turn that drew them. If the desired target is not accessible, the cameo will not move. Cameos cannot use nature trails unless otherwise stated. Campers lend their players unique abilities. When drawn, campers are placed face up in front of you. Campers may be traded with other counselors but not dropped. When this card appears, Otis strikes. Move Otis to the space where this card was drawn and Otis strikes, even when lurking. Some Otis Strikes cards have additional effects on that fight. And finally, there are Rumors cards, which will adjust the stats on Otis's card. They do not cause Otis to strike. Survival cards are given to players at the start of the game, and they can also acquire them during play. They come in two basic varieties, a single use or permanent. The single use is just what it says. After it's used, it's discarded. The permanent card remains with the player unless there's some rule that would eliminate it. And now we have to decide on our camp setup. Well, there's two basic varieties. We have uh, the first kind, which is quick and dirty. That has an easy difficulty. Um, and those are the instructions to set that up. But we're going to be playing with uh, the standard variety. It's a normal difficulty called the campfire. And we're going to set up the board according to these conditions. It has a special setup. It says start the body count at 1 and Otis, Otis's stalk at 2. So we're going to move the body count marker uh, to 1. And then that is going to increase Otis's stalk ability to 2. Okay, the next step in the setup is to place the objective tokens. We're going to give those a cut, and then we're going to place an objective token on each space that is indicated on the setup card. And then we're going to place the keys and the locked door tokens per the setup card as well. Now each of the finale decks, which are at the corners of the board, are shuffled. Uh, with the expansions, I have a total of five of those for each of the finales. And now each of our counselors are going to draw their survival cards. Every counselor is entitled to two cards. However, Karen is inspired. She's going to start the game with two additional survival cards. Okay, Sherry's first survival card is a single-use card called Double Cross. Cancel a single-use survival card as it is being played and add it to your backpack. Her second card is a permanent card called Bad Influence. 
you must always draw an additional card when tempting fate. The tempting fate mechanism is when a, a counselor is doing something incredibly stupid, risky, or naughty. That's when the counselor is tempted fate. When a card states tempt fate and X, you draw a number of cabin cards and discard all cards except for red Otis cards. You ignore the card's text and discard it. If at least one red card is drawn, Otis strikes. Then add one to Otis's attack roll for each additional red card drawn during this fight. All right, now Karen, she's like I had said earlier, she's going to begin with a total of four cards. First one is a single use card called Close Call. Play after a counselor draws a cabin card, ignore and discard it. Her second is also a single use called Stick Together. Play before moving, all cancel counselors in your cabin may move with you. Okay, now her bonus cards are a single use. It was all a bad dream. Play at the end of a counselor's turn. Undo everything that happened during that turn. Playable when dead. That's a very valuable card. And finally, another single-use card, Get a Grip. Play at any time to remove horrified tokens from all counselors. Horrified tokens indicate that the counselor is horrified. Their turn immediately ends, and they are minus one to all rolls until the end of the next turn. We track that with horrified counters. And now finally Jody's cards. He has a permanent card called Scrappy. When fighting Otis you may roll a four-sided die even if you have no weapons equipped. That's very valuable. And his last card is a single use called Slip Past. Play during your move phase. Move two more spaces this turn. You may safely move through a cameo or Otis's space without crossing paths. Okay, those are good cards. And now we have to choose which counselor will take their turn first. And we're going to go in the order that they were drafted. So Sherry will be the first player. Then we'll be followed by Karen and then Jody. And then Otis would take his turn. And the last step in the setup is to place Otis's token. He begins the game at the tool shed. So he's very near the counselors at the campfire. You'll notice on these objective cards that each of the objectives lists a series of items that are, are prerequisites in order to utilize that finale in the game. So the counselors are going to be traveling across the board, finding those objective tokens and hopefully coming up with the items that they need in order to take that um, finale. And that completes the setup. We're ready to begin the game. We will begin with a counselor's turn followed by an Otis turn. One of the most important tokens in the game are the keys. And those keys start the game in Morris's office. Uh, the keys are instrumental in opening locked doors on the board and they're required as a, a, a part of each objective. So those are very critical to have those. And we'll begin our counselor turn sequence starting with Sherry. Sherry has uh, three movement points and uh, she's able to ignore nature trails. Um, she can use those freely so she doesn't have to make a roll like the normal, normally a character would have to. So uh, Sherry is going to attempt to move towards, I think to try to get those keys and I'll have her kind of take this path and move around through the, um, using the that uh, nature trail. So she's going to move one, two, and then using the trail, three into the buck cabin. And that completes her move phase. We move on to the cabin draw phase and she draws the top cabin card. And that one is revealed to be a camper. His name is Morgan. Morgan excels at first aid. At the end of your turn, Morgan can attempt to heal one counselor in his cabin. Pick a counselor and roll a four-sided die. On a roll of two to four, he heals an injury. On a roll of one, oops, Morgan causes two injuries, but he feels really bad about it. His flavor text is, I live by a code. Everything is in my control. All right, so we're going to add Morgan to Sherry's card. 
and she is in control of Morgan. All right. And now it's Sherry's end phase, and in the end phase you're able to equip and unequip items and weapons from your backpack. You can pick up items, weapons, keys, and revealed objectives in your space. Or you can trade items, weapons, campers, objectives, and keys with other counselors in the same space. All right, now we'll move on with Karen. Uh, Karen has a move and health value of three currently. And she is going to uh, attempt to get to the stables, I think, and try to get that objective token up there. So I'm going to have her use the trail. She's going to use move into the little cub cabin. One, two, and three. That'll end her movement. And now she's going to draw a cabin card. And that is revealed to be a plot twist. Treehouse of Horror. Roll a four-sided dice. You find that many dead campers inside. Raise the body count accordingly, and then you are horrified. Okay, that is not a good card. Let's see if we have anything we can uh, play in order to cancel that. That's kind of a severe card. Yeah, she does. She has a close call card. Play after a counselor draws a cabin card. Ignore and discard it. So I think she'll do that. That's a good use of the card, and that will prevent us from having to go through that. All right. All right, and that's going to complete Karen's turn. She had nothing that she wanted to do in the end turn. And we'll start with Jody's move phase. Jody has a move of three, and I'm going to attempt to get him into the bunny cabin to see if he can investigate that objective token. So he's going to roll, or move rather, one, two, and three into the girl's shower. <laughs> okay. And now it's uh, Jody's cabin draw phase, and he draws a plot twist up the flagpole. The flavor text reads, I pledge allegiance to the flag, your lifeless body he shall drag. Plus one to the body count. All counselors in all locations are horrified. Whoa, that's a tough card. All right, so the body count is going to increase by one up to two. There's no benefit in that uh, space for Otis. Um, but all of the counselors are going to become horrified. And we're going to place a horrified token on each of the counselors. Okay, and the effects of being horrified are, when horrified, your turn immediately ends. There's no end of turn actions allowed. And you're minus one to all die rolls until the end of your next turn. And those are tracked with these horrified tokens. All right. And now it is the Otis turn. And we begin that with a stalk phase. Um, Otis is going to, uh, has a stalk value of two right now, so that allows him to move two spaces, and he is going to stalk the nearest character to him in movement spaces. Um, Otis does not, is not restricted by um, the nature trails or by locks. He can bust right through those. So we're going to calculate who is the closest target to Otis. Um, Karen would be one, two, three spaces, and Sherry would be one, two, three spaces. Okay, so when they're equal, it says here, target the cabin with the fewest campers, cameos, and counselors. All right, um, Sherry has the camper Morgan with him, or with her, rather. So uh, it says here, uh, target the cabin with the fewest campers, cameos and counselors. So that's going to be Karen then. All right, so in that case, he is going to move two spaces towards Karen, which will be one, he'll bust that lockout, and two, he'll move into the game room. All right, and that's going to end the first turn. Uh, the uh, play will pass to the left, so Karen will be the uh, next first player. And we'll start the next turn with Karen. She's in the little cub cabin. Now, unfortunately, um, Otis is blocking her from getting to the stables, which is where she originally wanted to go. So we're going to have to reroute her to another location. 
Okay, Karen's uh, move phase is now. She has a move in health of three. So I'm going to move her, I guess, towards away from, from Otis's location. She'll move towards the campfire. One, two, and then taking that path three to the campfire. Now the campfire is considered to be a cabin location. So uh, for her second part of her uh, turn is a cabin draw phase, and she'll draw a card. And that card is revealed to be a weapon, acoustic guitar. Kumbaya. While equipped, uh, while equipped, Otis will stalk you. When Otis strikes is drawn, you are attacked. Discard if used to win a fight. Okay, it's a two-handed weapon, uh, and she'll equip that immediately. So we'll have that under her, uh, that's both hands, so that will allow her to, she cannot have any more items equipped. And that's going to end her turn. And now it's Jody's turn. Uh, Jody has a move and health value of three. He's going to head towards this objective token. So he's going to move one into the bunny cabin, two into that space, and then he's going to spend a movement point to reveal that token. And it ends up to be a car battery. Now that's one of the objective tokens that we need uh, for the, the van finale. And that also is for the ranger tower finale. All right, so we will add that to his card. Now it's the cabin draw phase, and he ends up drawing a plot twist. Truth or dare? Pick another counselor. That counselor must choose truth or dare. Truth, take a card of your choice from that counselor's backpack, or dare, that counselor must fool around with a counselor of your choice. Tempt fate three. Well, in this case, none of the other um, counselors have any items in their uh, backpack. So we would just choose uh, truth, take a card of your choice from that counselor's backpack. They don't have any, so that card is complete. Now we'll move on with Sherry. She has the camper Morgan with her, and uh, she's going to, uh, she has a movement value of three, and I'll have her move into the commons room. So she's going to move one two, and then the diagonal, three, into the space with the um, objective token. Now, she won't be able to examine that token, uh, but uh, she's at least in the same space with it. I should clarify one thing, and that's regarding these objective tokens. Um, it, technically, when you're moving, um, during the move phase, it takes one movement point to pick up or reveal an objective token. But in the cabin draw phase, uh, you have an option where you can either draw a cabin card or if there is an unrevealed objective token in the space, you can reveal it instead of drawing a cabin card. Sometimes you might not want to draw a cabin card because you're risking an attack from uh, Otis. And so it kind of depends on the game situation on how to play this, but that's how those things will work. Um, like in this case, now it's her cabin draw phase. She can either draw a cabin card or she can reveal that token. And I'm going to have her reveal the token. And that's a crank. Okay, so she's gained a crank. And that is a objective for the ranger tower and for the boat. So we'll put that crank on Sherry's card. That's actually very, very good. So Sherry has the crank and Jody has a battery. If we can get the keys, we would be able to go and start the objectives for the ranger tower um, at any time we want. Uh, so that would be actually very interesting if we would be able to do that. Uh, well, all of In order to uh, undergo a, a finale, all of those objective items have to be present before you can uh, initiate a finale. So we would have to make sure that we've got all of the characters that have those components in that location. All right, now it is Otis's turn. We'll start with his stock phase. Otis has a stock value of two, and he is going to stock the nearest character. Okay, uh, Otis normally stalks the closest character or cameo. But in this case, well, Karen is the closest regardless, but I just wanted to show. She has this acoustic guitar equipped, and it says, while equipped, Otis will stalk you. 
When Otis strikes is drawn, you are attacked. Discard if used to win in a fight. Okay, so either way though, in this case, Karen is going to be stalked. Uh, but if it, say if someone else would have had that acoustic guitar, Otis would be stalking them while that guitar is equipped. Okay, he has a stock value of two, so he's going to move two spaces towards uh, Karen. He'll move one and then take the uh, trail to the tool shed, two. All right. Okay, that is going to end the turn, and our next first player is going to be Jody. Okay, Jody's move face, he has a move and health of three, so he's going to move towards that ranger tower finale. So we'll, uh, if we can get those keys and we can get the other characters there, we could actually start the finale right away. So he's going to move one, two, three. He's in the girl's shower. Okay, uh, now it is the cabin draw phase and he has to draw a cabin card. The card is, uh-oh, Otis Strikes. All right, in this case, because of the acoustic guitar, when Otis Strikes is drawn, you are attacked. So in that case, Karen is going to be attacked by Otis at the campfire. All right, we'll resolve that. All right, to resolve a, an Otis attacks, uh, we have to see if that counselor has a weapon. In this case, Karen does. She has the acoustic guitar. Now that allows her to roll a six-sided die. And in this case, the high roller uh, will win the fight. Otis will win on ties though. Uh, Otis has a current attack of a four-sided die, so the advantage is definitely to Karen. We'll roll her her uh, die and see what she gets. Okay, she rolled a six. That's great. So that's automatically going to have her, she's going to win because the highest that Otis can roll is a four. Okay, here is the roll for Otis. He rolled a one. All right, so she defeated Otis six to one. Uh, it says here that uh, the, the acoustic guitar is discarded if used to win a fight. So we're going to have to discard that. But Otis is defeated. And when Otis is defeated, he goes off board. And that means he's lurking. So we don't know where he is, but he's lurking. If Otis is ever um, lurking at the start of his stalk phase, he will appear at a random nature trail before his move. Okay, uh, now it is Sherry's turn. She has Morgan, the uh, camper, with her. She has a move of three, so she's going to move to try to pick up those keys. So she's going to move one, two, and then spend a movement point to pick up the keys. We'll add those to her card. And now it is the um, cabin draw phase for Sherry, and that card is revealed to be item, occult, the tarot. When drawn, place this card in front of you. Draw five cabin cards. Look at the cards. Then shuffle and place them face down on this card. The counselors may not begin a finale while the tarot is still in play. Counselors may draw from the tarot instead of the cabin deck on their cabin draw phase. Discard when there are no more cards on the tarot. Oh, that came at a terrible time for us. Okay, we'll take care of that. All right, so the five cards that we drew are a plot twist called Fire, a plot twist called Lights Out Campers, a weapon, Butcher Knife, plot twist called Killer's Obsession, and one Otis Strikes card. Okay, so those are going to be shuffled and placed underneath the tarot card, and we will not be able to undertake a finale until those cards are under the tarot card are gone. Okay, now it is Karen's turn. She is at the campfire. She has a move in health of three. Um, I'm going to have Karen make her way towards that ranger finale and uh, get in, at least in position for that. So uh, I think I'll have her move uh, one, two, and then three into the um, girl's shower. And if that if it ends up that um, Otis attacks, at least um, Jody is in the same cabin, and he has that scrappy uh, survival card that would at least give him some defense. So we'll do that now. It is Karen's um, 
cabin draw phase and she's going to draw from the tarot and that card is revealed to be a butcher knife a weapon re 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 you may re-roll your butcher knife result once per fight you must accept the second roll it's a one-handed weapon and it has a d6 that's a pretty good weapon all right we'll give that and equip that to karen that's great and now it is Otis's turn. Otis is currently lurking, so we're going to have to make a random roll to find out which nature trail he is going to appear at. So we're going to roll a d10, and that'll tell us where he comes on the board. He comes on on space 5. Okay, space 5 is at the little cub cabin, so he's going to start in that spot. And now it's his stalk phase. He has a stalk of two. So he's going to move towards the nearest uh, counselor, which is going to be uh, Karen. And he'll move two spaces. One, two. He's at the campfire. And that is going to end his turn. And we'll shift the first player to Sherry. And incidentally, as all of the um, counselors have taken a turn after they received uh, their uh, horrified tokens... Those are now removed. So we're going to remove the horrified tokens from each of the counselors. All right, now it is Sherry's turn. Uh, she is at the um, Morris's office. Now she has that special ability, Orienteer, which allows her to use nature trails freely. So that's just what she's going to do. She's going to expend one of her movement points to move into the uh, girl's shower. She's in the same spot as Jody. And then now she is going to um, do her cabin draw phase. And she's going to take a card from the tarot deck. We want to get rid of those so that we can undertake our uh, finale. And that card is revealed to be a plot twist. Lights out, campers. All campers in every cabin are discarded. Remove Otis from the board and adjust the body count accordingly. All right, so that means that Morgan, which was a camper with Sherry, he's going to be removed, and that body count is going to move up one. All right, we're going to move that body count up to three now, and that's going to add one to Otis's attack value. So Otis's attack value will go from a four-sided die to a six-sided die. Okay, now it is Karen's turn. Karen is going to enter the same space as the other two, and there she's going to draw a cabin card. She's going to use one of the tarot cards so we can get rid of those as soon as possible. That card is revealed to be a plot twist. Killer's Obsession. Place this card on your counselor card. The next time Otis Strikes card is drawn, Otis Strikes your space instead. If you survive the attack, draw a survival card and discard Killer's Obsession. Okay, so we're going to place that on Karen's card card and uh, we will follow those instructions and now we're going to move on to Jody uh, Jody has three movement points available he is not going to expend any movement points he'll stay where he is and then he is going to draw the card from the tarot deck and that one is revealed to be a plot twist fire place a fire token on this space any counselor that crosses paths with the fire must roll a four-sided die. On a one to two, they're burned, receive an injury. Three to four, they're safe. Okay. All right, so we're going to place a fire token there. And that card is going to be left out for future use. And now it's Otis's turn. He's going to stalk the counselors. They're all in the same location. He has a stock value of two. So he's going to move two spaces towards them. One, two in the beaver cabin. All right. And uh, the first player marker is advanced to Karen. And we will end the turn. All right. Now we'll begin with uh, Karen is the first player. Um, she is going to draw. She's going to remain where she is. So we are going to have to deal with this fire that is broken out in the girl shower and it says here that place a fire token on the space any counselor that crosses paths with the fire must roll a four-sided die 
I apologize, I had to switch batteries. Um, yeah, so the fire token, um, I did do a little reading on this about what crosses paths, the d definition of that. Crosses paths, the definition of that is always entering into a space. The rules don't say anything about it being in the space already. But I think being in a space with fire, we should probably make the roll, even though we're not really entering the space, but it makes it would make thematic sense. So we're going to have uh, Karen perform a, that fire roll on a three or four, she's safe, a one or two, and she'd receive an injury. Okay, she rolled a four, so she's safe. And now um, she's going to take that uh, cabin card from the tarot. We know that from what we had looked at, the five cards, this is going to be an Otis Strikes. And that card is an Otis Strikes. All right, so Otis is going to move to that space. And now any of the of the counselors in that space can try to defend the rest against Otis. And we're going to have uh, Karen take the lead on this. Uh, she's going to use her butcher knife, which is a six-sided die. Now, uh, Otis has been, his attack has increased to a six-sided die as well. All right, so here is going to be Karen's roll. She rolled a six. That's great. Okay, so Karen has a six. And Otis, as long as he doesn't roll a six, we will win the fight. He rolled a one. That's great. All right, so Otis is defeated. The other campers are safe. Otis will go off board and he'll be lurking. And that is going to finish Karen's turn. Um, that is absolutely great. So we'll give her back her knife. At cards, these cards are gone now. And we'll move on to Jody's turn. Now Jody can, at the start of his turn, he is going to call for the finale at the Ranger Tower. If we examine the card, the Ranger Tower, it lists keys, a crank, and a battery as the primary objectives. Uh, Sherry has the crank and the keys, and Jody has the battery. So we're able to, and all of our counselors are in the same space together, and we're able to um, to start that finale. Now, just in this, for the sake of uh, being fair, I think I'm going to have Jody make the roll for that fire as well. And it just seems to make thematic sense. So we're going to have him roll four-sided die, and we'll see if he takes a wound or not. He rolled a one, so he is injured. He's gonna move one down on his move and health that will reduce him down to two. And now they're gonna undertake, because they have all of the requirements, they're gonna undertake the finale at the Ranger Tower. So we'll flip that card and see what happens. All right, the card is revealed to be staying alive. All right, we go through these one step at a time. The first one is treed by Otis. The counselors must survive 13 days in the tower. Place the body count marker at 13. Move the body count pawn one space towards zero for every day that passes. Whoa. All right. All right, so we're going to place that body count marker on 13. And it says here, do what you must to make it to day zero. And uh, we have to roll a six-sided die. And that will tell us what the effects are for each of those days. Whoa, this is going to be something else. All right. First one is starve. One day passes. Then each counselor rolls a six-sided die. One, to, one equals two injuries. A three to four is one injury. And a five or six, tighten your belt. All right. Let's do the roll. It's a three, so that's one injury, and that is to um, Karen. Karen will take an injury. That puts her down to two. Uh, and then a day passes. And we're going to make a roll for each counselor rolls a six-sided die. Whoa, okay, so I guess everybody has to make that roll before we advance the, the day counter. Okay, 
Uh, then Jody would have to roll. He rolled a six, and that's tight in your belt, so it's no effect. And then Sherry will roll. She rolls a two, and that's going to be... Um, Hmm. Well, it must mean one or two is two injuries because it's one equals two injuries, three or four is one injury, and five or six is tighten your belt. So they must mean one or two. So she's going to take two injuries. All right. It'll move her from three down to a move health of one. Okay, and that has advanced the day by one. Okay. Does say a snap a desperate counselor may eat one of their campers or attack a counselor if unarmed use a four-sided dice panic equals death feed if a counselor or camper dies all living counselors return to full health and four days pass two days if a camper okay so we're going to go through that sequence again um, we'll start with karen here's the roll she rolls a six so that's tighten your belt that's good Jody, he rolls a six, so that's good too, no change in his status. And then Sherry, she rolled a four, and that's going to be one injury. That'll put her down to one away from death. We're going to see if we have any cards we can play that might help us. No, not really. Okay, we'll move that day marker one space, and then we'll go through this again. This is very tough. Okay, here's Karen's roll. She rolled a three. Uh, that's going to give her one injury. She's down to uh, one health and move. She has two boxes left. Uh, Jody's up next. He rolled a four. That's one injury. He has two boxes left. And we'll see what happens to Sherry. Sherry rolled a one, so that is going to kill her. All right, and it does say if a counselor or camper dies, all living counselors return to full health and four days pass. Okay, so we're going to return everybody to full health, and one, two, three, four days will pass. And then we'll commence it again. And Sherry is no more. Okay, here's Karen's roll. She rolls a three, so that's going to have one injury to her. And Jody's up next. He rolls a four. That's one injury. And then we will advance that time track one more. And then we'll continue on again. Karen. She rolls a five. Tighten your belt. No problems. And then Jody. Rolls a six. No problems. All right. We'll advance that one more at day five. And then we'll continue on. Here's Karen's roll. She rolls a one, so that's going to be two injuries. That puts her within one away from death. And then Jody is up next. He rolls a four. That's going to get him one injury. He's two boxes away from death. We'll advance the day track one more. And we'll continue on. This is Karen's roll. She rolls a three, and that is going to kill Karen. So Karen is dead. And uh, that will allow Jody to feed, and that will get him back up to full strength. And then we would be able to advance uh, four days. One, two, three, four. All right, so that means that Jody has survived. And we read on. It says, I made a tummy bad. On day zero, a seemingly satisfied Otis disappears into the woods. The starving counselors win the game. However, they claim to have no knowledge of their friend's whereabouts. Okay, well then that means that Jody has survived his ordeal at Camp Grizzly. That was an extremely fast game compared to those that I've seen on the web. Um, we might have to play this again. Well, anyway, that will complete the playthrough of Camp Grizzly. Thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you soon again at the Solo Gamers Club. Have a good evening.